On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, Blockchain.info announced support for both Segwit and Bitcoin Cash, opening up the choice to the 18 million wallets that are managed by their platform. All of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So, blockchain.info, www.blockchain.com now, but we used to call it blockchain.info because that was the website address. This is one of the most widely used Bitcoin wallets in the world, if not the most widely used. Now they claim here, over 18 million wallets have been created or managed through their platform, and they have broadcast over 100 million transactions. Now, this means that what blockchain.info does with their platform matters. It means because they are the wallet of choice for like the average non-technical user, and because of that, any technical change that they make to their platform, the average user doesn't understand it, and that means blockchain info are essentially making that choice for them, which is okay, because that's the reason people choose them. So one of the main reasons people go to blockchain.info is because they want a simple user interface that hides that complexity. The flip side to that, however, is that these 18 million users may not fully understand the implications of what blockchain decide to do on their behalf. Now, I recently pointed out, for example, that on Segwit Party, which is a website, segwit.party forward slash charts, it's a site that tracks the percentage of transactions that use the Segwit address format. And it shows that this is still only happening for about 10% of all transactions on the Bitcoin network. I also pointed out that blockchain.info probably have a lot to do with this. I mean, I use blockchain.info like I would my regular wallet. It's the one I carry around with me all the time with a small amount of Bitcoin in it for spending anywhere that accepts it. And I noticed that even now, after Segwit has been around and been with us for months, when I click receive in my blockchain.info wallet, it doesn't create a Segwit address. So that means all the thousands and thousands of transactions per day that originate from the blockchain.info wallets they're using the old address format and therefore taking up more block space than they need to. Now, this is especially important right now when btc.com, down in the bottom right hand corner here where it shows their network stats, is reporting a pool of unconfirmed transactions that totals 92 megabytes. And it's been at this level for days now. And remember, average block time of 10 minutes and one megabyte of transactions gets processed every 10 minutes. So to be clear, blockchain.info failing to adopt SegWit fully into their platform is contributing to this backlog. And well, not contributing to it exactly, but rather holding back on something that could seriously ease the problem. That's probably a fairer way of putting it. And like I said, most of their users have no idea this is going on, right? So now time for the big news. Over to the Bitcoin, sorry, the blockchain.info blog. On the 15th of November, they published uh, this article that they're going to make two major changes to their wallet platform. The first change is to add Bitcoin cash support by the end of the year. That's the end of 2017. And the second change is that they will be rolling out segregated witness support fully by the end of March of 2018, which they say, you know, first quarter 2018, which I'm saying is end of March. So 18 million wallets, remember, on the blockchain platform. So this is huge. Putting the Bitcoin Cash thing to one side for just a second here, as soon as blockchain.info switch their platform to use SegWit by default, all their users will start generating SegWit addresses when they click the receive button. So this will happen automatically. Now this will do the whole Bitcoin ecosystem some good in terms of these transaction backlogs 
Since blockchain.info will no longer be this big source of old style transactions that take up more block space. That's still four months away, which is frankly, it's an eternity in the Bitcoin world, but at least now we are no longer in the dark about this. Now I'm going to slightly contradict myself. I said that the average blockchain.info user comes to them because they want a simple interface and then for blockchain.info to hide the complexity. Well, by the end of this year, all those users are going to see a third cryptocurrency appear in their blockchain.info wallet. Blockchain.info already supports Bitcoin and Ethereum, but one day you will log in and then you'll have a place to store your Bitcoin cash as well. This will have many repercussions. One of the most important being that suddenly millions of people who may never have even heard of Bitcoin Cash before will discover it for the first time. Another implication is that some users might accidentally try and send from their Bitcoin wallet inside blockchain to their Bitcoin Cash address, right? I think the blockchain developers will catch this and then prevent it from happening within the interface, but they can't prevent a user from accidentally sending from an external Bitcoin wallet and then trying to receive it into their Bitcoin Cash wallet in blockchain.info. So this is really down to the Bitcoin Cash developers. I thought there was some talk about changing the address format for Bitcoin Cash so that there was a clear distinction between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash addresses, but that seems to have gone quiet. So in conclusion then, I bet one of the reasons why blockchain.info have given themselves several months to make these changes is not just about software development, but rather to get their support team ready. And I can see them receiving like a tidal wave of support tickets from confused users asking things like, what is this Bitcoin cash? Or I sent my Bitcoin to the cash address by accident and so on. On a more abstract level, the question is whether they are doing the right thing here by giving their users the choice between Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash. And it's not an either or choice, of course, the blockchain platform can be used to manage both. Now, blockchains say in this post that it is due to user demand. The, the way they put it is Bitcoin Cash has proven strong demand in, in, in our view, it says. Market demand for Bitcoin Cash has proven strong, it says. So this is on the more abstract level. Is this responsible, right? Even though there is market demand, I've already heard people objecting on the basis that if Bitcoin Cash didn't carry the Bitcoin name, would blockchain.info be making this move? This is the key question. You could argue that Litecoin has been around so much longer than Bitcoin Cash, yet blockchain.info haven't given any indication about supporting Litecoin, have they? You know, the contention around the quote, hijacking of the Bitcoin logo and brand name is something that comes up a lot in the online discussions these days. Someone even said to me, they said, how would you like it, Chris, if someone hijacked your brand and your company name? And my response was, that's an invalid example, on the basis that I am an individual with 100% ownership of a private company. The Bitcoin network, the name, the brand, the logo, they're all reasonably considered to be public property and thus not owned by any individual by definition. Right? That's why everyone loves it. But as ever, there are two sides to every coin, meaning the lack of private ownership means anyone can take the name and repurpose it however they want. I'm personally fine with this because I believe the benefits to having a public network like Bitcoin is worth the friction caused by any so-called hijackers because I trust the free market to make the best decision through crowdsourced wisdom, let's call it. That is, of course, if everyone is allowed to communicate openly without the fear of censorship. So thanks very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the bell so you'll get notified whenever I produce a new video. And if you would like access to my very best material, visit my website, cryptoversity.com, 
you can go over to the courses section where you'll find a range of my step-by-step -step online courses that will teach you everything from the basics of Bitcoin right through to how to make and save money with Bitcoin. So that's all for today. I'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now. <laughs>